The Love and Social Network Scale, or LSNS, was born out of necessity. In the early 1980s, I joined a research team at the University of California, Berkeley, that had received a large federal grant to evaluate the merits of care management for frail, low-income, community-dwelling older adults. I was charged with overseeing the construction of a battery of assessment measures that would provide the program's nurses and social workers with essential clinical data, while also producing rigorous, high-quality data desired by the researchers. For the most part, we were able to adapt existing measures commonly used in long-term care settings to assess physical and mental health status of the study participants. However, there were no well-established measures to assess the social health status of community-dwelling older adult populations at that time. Fortunately, I was taking a course at that time in the School of Public Health at UC Berkeley with Leonard Syme. He introduced me to the Berkman Syme Social Network Index, which I added to our assessment battery in our study, even though the SNI was designed for a much younger population than that which we were studying. Unfortunately, the SNI did not perform well in our study. It was not capable of distinguishing between a random sample of low-income elderly that constituted our control group and our experimental group that had been purposely recruited because they had identified risk factors of premature institutionalization, including the risk factor of social isolation. This null finding suggested that something was wrong with the SNI as it was being administered among our older adult study population. Given that I was at UC Berkeley at the time, I gained access to the research team that had constructed the survey instrument used in the berkman Syme study. With these resources, I was able to deconstruct the SNI elements and parse its scoring algorithm. Looking at the data we had collected from our frail older adult sample, I discovered that two of the four elements in the SNI were highly problematic. They both dealt with social participation and both had extremely limited variation. One element asked about a person's membership in clubs and organizations. The other one asked about participation in church and temple activities. Undoubtedly, the low participation rate in both types of social activity was largely due to the fact that the participants in our study were poor, frail, and older adults. The item from the SNI that offered the most promise was the one that asked about the nature of relationships with family and friends. There were 35 questions that dealt with family and friends in the original survey questionnaire used by Berkman Syme. Accordingly, the original Love and Social Network scale that we created in 1988 was largely built from these questions. The original LSNS is a 10-item scale that quantifies social support networks. Since the 1988 Journal of Family and Community Health article that first described the LSNS, there have been over 700 other research studies that have cited it. A study by Rubenstein, Lovin, and Mitzner showed that the LSNS was highly correlated with clinical assessment of social isolation. The LSNS has also been associated with an array of health outcomes, including hospital utilization. In one study that we did at UCLA, the increased risk of hospitalization associated with social isolation as measured by the LSNS, was on par with that associated with smoking. Another study by Mystery and Associates showed that those with lower LSNS scores were at increased risk of rehospitalization even after controlling for other health risk. And yet another study, Sierra and Associates, found that low scores on the LSNS at baseline were associated with increased risk of mortality over a six-year period of their study. The LSNS enabled calculating a family subscale and a friendship subscale. Lower scores on the LSNS have been used as a proxy for social isolation. However, the inquiry used in the original LSNS had some problems. Some of the items were double-barreled questions, and so it was unclear whether respondents were answering the first part of the question or the second part. Further, a couple of the items produced limited variation. Thus, we set about constructing a new and improved version of the LSNS that would address these problems. In 2003, we published a revised version of the LSNS. 
The LSNSR is a 12-item revised version of the original 10-item LSNS. We also published an LSNS-6, a six-item abbreviated version. Both the LSNSR and the LSNS-6 have a series of questions for assessing family ties and a comparable set of questions assessing friendships. The lead-in for the family questions is, considering all the people you are related to by birth, marriage, adoption, and so forth. The lead-in for the friendships questions is considering all your friends, including those who live in your neighborhood. The full set of questions for all versions of the LSNS are available on the LSNS website. There is also an 18-item version, the LSNS 18, which takes the friends items and breaks them into friends who are neighbors as opposed to friends who may live more distant from the person who is being surveyed. All versions have strong psychometric properties as illustrated here. The LSNS-18 is often used in research settings where people may want to understand more about neighbors and the role they may play. This longer version has not been cited as much as the other two versions of the LSNS. Social researchers tend to use the LSNSR. The LSNSR has two clear factors, kinship and friendship ties, and hold up well across a wide array of studies. Sometimes researchers use the total skill score, sometimes the social isolation cut point score, and sometimes the subscale scores. The LSNS-6 is particularly gaining a great deal of use in health research, in part because its psychometric properties are on par with the LSNSR, and it is shorter and therefore takes less time to administer. The LSNS-6 is also being used as a screener for social isolation in practice settings. What follows are summaries of a couple of our studies that illustrate how the LSNS-6 has been used in health services research settings. About 10 years ago, we did a study in Europe where we looked at three different European countries. We had a sample in London, a sample in Hamburg, and another drawn from Solothurn, a rural area in Switzerland. Social isolation as measured by the LSNS-6 was consistently associated with a wide array of health measures across all three countries in that particular study. A few years later, we conducted a longitudinal study in Los Angeles using the LSNS-6 as a measure of social isolation. The focus of this study was on identifying factors that increased the risk for cognitive impairment. We found that those respondents in the study who were deemed socially isolated at baseline were twice as likely to report symptoms of cognitive impairment by the end of the four-year period of the study than those with strong social ties. In closing, I would like to add that the LSNS has been translated into a number of different languages, and references to these studies can be found on the LSNS website at Boston College. On the website, we have a large bibliography of studies that have used the LSNS. This can be helpful for identifying other scholars interested in examining social support networks and social isolation. Overall, it has been a very rewarding part of my academic career to have developed a valid and reliable scale that is now being widely used as a measure for social networks or in the negative form, social isolation. Having a valid and reliable measure for social isolation is especially timely because scholars and clinicians have increasingly recognized that social isolation is an important social behavioral health risk factor. For example, eradicating social isolation is one of the grand challenges for the American Academy of Social Work and Social Welfare. The ARP Foundation has a Connect to Effect campaign to reduce social isolation and loneliness. Social isolation kills. In order to address this behavioral health risk, valid and reliable measures are essential in both practice and research settings. The LSNS is one such measure. Thank you.